Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hope you are doing well. I'm back with another video on trending cybersecurity topic. In this video, we will discuss one of the hottest topics in the industry, zero day business. And following this video, I will believe that you will be able to understand what is zero day vulnerabilities, how hackers are using it to exploit organizations, and how they are selling it to governments darknet and in the darknet for significant amount of price. So what is zero day business? And hacker have discovered that the best way to get rich is not to exploit the zero day vulnerability, but to sell the discovered vulnerabilities and critical data of organizations to the highest bidder, such as the rival organizations, the government, or other threat actors on the darknet. The last few years have seen more and more threat actors getting caught selling zero days, information and running zero days business to fill their pockets. But before we get into the details of the zero day business, let me refresh you with zero day vulnerabilities and the danger they pose. So what is a zero day vulnerability? A zero day vulnerability is simply a security vulnerability discovered in a piece of software or application. But how did it end up being called zero day, you may ask, right? So every vulnerability needs a patch or security update to fix it. But hackers are known to exploit the zero day vulnerability as soon as they identify it, giving literally zero days to the organization to mitigate risks or release the fixed patch update. Hence the name Zero Day. But have you ever thought, how does a zero day attack work? Simply put, software developers and analysts carry out routine scans to check the strength and security of any software. If the threat actor spots vulnerability before the developers, they can exploit it. And this is how zero day attacks is executed. Depending upon the location of the vulnerability, a zero day can grant the gift that can be misused to carry out all sorts of malicious harm if given to the wrong ends. And have you ever wondered how dangerous a zero day attack could be? There are various dangers associated with zero days attacks. If the vulnerability is left unaddressed or a software patch is not released soon, Threat actors can easily explode these vulnerabilities and carry out a wide array of malicious activities. Generally, the dangers of zero-day attacks depend upon the nature of the vulnerability. I will explain, don't worry. Let's take an example. There might have been a network security patch allowing threat actor to gain access to the network and elevate their privileges. Threat actors may also explore a vulnerability in the database or file system, allowing them to extract vulnerability consumer data, intellectual property, or financial records. They might also be able to exploit zero-day vulnerabilities to insert a malware, remote executable code, and ransomware to damage the information systems. Finding a zero-day exploit is like entering God mode in a video game. Once a cyber criminal finds a severe vulnerability, they can use it for various purposes and in the worst case scenario, even bring down the organization information systems. Thus, one needs to be in God mode to always be on the lookout for such vulnerabilities before hackers do, right? So let us take a look back into one of the most controversial and significant incidents of the 1960s involving one of the top independent agencies of the world, the NASA. So Mariner 1, the first US spacecraft to cloth Venus, was launched on July 22, 1962, but was destroyed by NASA exactly 294 seconds after launch. But why NASA was forced to destroy its $150 million spacecraft, you may ask? And the answer is a misplaced high pen. Sounds unbelievable, right? You heard it right. A single high pen was left out of the guidance equation, which sent the spacecraft 
on a collision course towards the North Atlantic population, forcing NASA to stop the Mariner 1 in its tracks. If a single hyphen could cause such a significant turn of events, imagine how severe unpatched vulnerabilities can do, right? So let us now see how Zero Day exploits have grown over the last few years. Ever since the beginning of 2021, there has been a significant increase in the Zero Day's attacks worldwide. The volume and the variety of Zero Day attacks were noted by Mandiant, Threat Intelligence and Google's Project Zero. Google's Project Zero is a tech giant's bug hunting team. The project outlined in their findings how they track 58 zero days exploits in 2021, a number more than double than the previous year, which was 25. Mandiant, on the other hand, revealed 80 zero days exploits in 2021 compared to just 30 in 2020. So Project Zero reveals the trends for most zero days in various categories, such as web browsers, in which they reveal that their Chromium browser recorded uh, the highest number of zero days, followed by Safari, WebKit, and Internet Explorer. Operating systems uh, highlighting the most zero days target operating systems in 2021 was, of course, Windows, followed by iOS, macOS, and Android. So can you guess the most targeted server for 2021? Well, it is also one of the Microsoft products, and specifically Microsoft Exchange Server, which suffered five zero days. Mandiant reports also raised many questions and provided many details about the zero-day business scenario. Mandiant's finding revealed how state-sponsored espionage groups occupy the seats of the high table when it comes to zero-day attacks. China espionage activity is at the highest showing its involvement in eight zero days attacks in 2021, followed by the participation of Russia and two and North uh, Korea in one. So also financially motivated cybercrime groups contributed one third of all zero days exploit across 2021. The reports also shared how zero day exploitation is linked to ransomware and popular vendors are highly targeted. The top three zero days exploits suffering the most are Microsoft, Apple, and Google. Now we'll move on the next part, zero day business and services. So why is zero day becoming an arsenal for both hackers and government? And let me explain this in the easiest way possible. So zero days exploit and vulnerabilities serves as great tools for cyber criminal and cyber warfare, and their demand has fueled the rise of zero day markets on the dark web. The internet has been full of news of zero days exploits lately. A report by Digital Shadows highlights vulnerabilities that affect organizations worldwide. I've given the link to the report in the description, so look it up, but I will highlight some of the crucial findings of the report. So one, hackers have been claiming that they can easily sell identified zero days vulnerabilities for $10 million. Yes, you heard it right, $10 million zero day. Auctions are held on the dark web and cybercrime forum as they provide a ground for their malicious underground world and filter proper buyers. Hackers are offering even more than legitimate firms and organizations for reporting these vulnerabilities. The report highlighted a threat actor offering $3 million for an RCE, remote code execution, zero-day vulnerability compared to the Mia Gear $1 million payout provided by ZeroDium, a zero-day broker for a similar Windows 10 exploit. Zero-day vulnerabilities are amongst the highest payouts for cyber criminals. And that is just the tip of the iceberg. There are various categories of threat actors depending upon their funds. What not worthy is that the elite hackers of this categorization, the actors that can uh, buy or sell exploits for over $1 million are often thought of as state or entrepreneur-backed malicious artists, since they only can afford such whooping amounts for zero-days exploits. 
The reports also highlight the exploit as a service model. Yes, it's another service model that offers zero-day exploits to common or low-level cyber criminals who can also carry out criminal activities by leveraging malicious software. Additionally, the exploit as a service model can be used as a sample for testing before sophisticated actors consider purchasing the full product. But zero-day brokers and zero-day business compromise the bigger picture. Although it may seem that the zero-day business has grown and evolved recently, it has existed for quite a while. Since the beginning of the cyber warfare, the sale and purchase of state-sponsored zero-days exploits have been present. Nicole Perloff's book, This is How They Tell Me the World Ends, and I, I will share the link for the video I did on the book report, account of the zero-days market and how law enforcement agencies worldwide are major buyers of these exploits and look for these to execute covered espionage operation. The account of the cyber arms trade with government-backed markets and a look at the global warfare shared with truth and become the business book of 2021. So zero-day exploits can be explained as the blood diamonds of cybersecurity. They are trailed by both nation-state defense contractors and cyber criminals on the one hand and security defenders on the other end. Although the Snowden documents reveal that the tech giants such as Google, Facebook, etc. compiled with legal requests for specific customer information they never granted NSA or any other government agency backdoors to any of their applications, products or software. Still, some companies like Yahoo were discovered to go to great lengths to comply with the lawful NSA request. But that is not all that Snowden revealed. Various zero days exploits were also sourced from outside the agency, hinting at a lively outsourcing trade with the NSA commercial partners and security partners. Thus, the world governments engaging in dealing with zero days exploit is just one side of the story. The other one is cyber criminals. And you must have heard of the dark web, the hidden websites with underground platform available via only special browser, right? There has been a countless news about the dealing of cyber crime as a service models. But did you know that zero day exploits are around you? and you never even notice? The best example maybe is Stuxnet, is one of the most widely known cases which used the four zero days attacks in Windows. Stuxnet infected industrial PLCs, programmable logic controllers, to execute commands on manufacturing systems and sabotage nuclear centrifuges, causing them to self-destruct. The attack targeted several countries, such as India, Indonesia, and more, with a primary focus on disrupting Iran's nuclear program. And I've created a separate video on Stuxnet, so you can easily watch and learn about how exactly it worked. And I provided the link of the video in the description. So let me share another story of one of today's most popular trends, NFTs. An OpenSea's exploit. The NFT marketplace, OpenSea, is one of the most popular platforms for NFT enthusiasts. However, cybercriminal also have a quite, quite a liking for it. In March 2021, Coindesk shared the story of a man selling the zero-day NFT collection. At first, it sounds like any other regular NFT. However, it wasn't. The NFT contained the details of a zero-day vulnerability for the IOQEC 3, I hope I said it right, engine, allowing the owner of the NFT to exploit it and cause a denial of service. The story tells us how NFTs can also pave the way for sharing zero-days exploit. So let me tell you about a few other zero-days exploits that shock the target entities and countries. A good example is DoQ, and DoQ is 2011's malware that exploited Windows zero-day vulnerability just like Stuxnet. 
do you exploited vulnerabilities in the Windows kernel, allowing threat actors to execute code remotely. What's particular about DQ is that it came as a war document that exploited the kernel flow once open and installed on the system. DQ is a sophisticated malware allowing it to execute malicious code spread to multiple machines and remove itself from the target systems after 36 days. I have covered it in details in another video as well, so you can watch and enjoy. However, zero-day vulnerabilities in Windows did not stop there. Flame, a malware discovered by Kaspersky in 2012, was exploiting a zero-day vulnerabilities in Windows. Flame was an advanced espionage malware that could record audio, keystroke, screenshot, and network traffic, and affected system in Iran, Israel, Sudan, Syria, Lebanon, and Egypt. But it didn't end there. Flame was found to be similar to Stuxnet and was rumored by the Washington Post to be created under classified code game, Olympic Games, by NSA, CIA, and Israeli military. I have also covered it in detail video, so you can go through it. So wrapping it up, as long as there are software vulnerabilities, the zero-day business will continue to exist. With the digital world and services becoming the norm for every other activity, how long do you think we can stay safe if governments are just as knee-deep in zero-day exploits dealing as cyber criminals? As I discussed earlier, it is evident that various countries are involved in cyber espionage and might be the largest players in the zero days business. One thing is for certain, normal people like you and me will be the last to know, but the first ones that will be affected by such practices. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments if you have any doubts about anything that we have discussed today, and if you would like to share anything else, I will appreciate your feedbacks in the comments. That is all for today, guys. Thank you for watching the video. You can check out my channel for more interesting videos like this if you are here for the first time. You can also recommend uh, any new topic you would like me to cover in one of these videos. Take care, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.